Петрос. И пользуясь случаем, мы хотим от всех с вами, давайте вместе аплодисментами, поздравим Петра с одной звездой Мишлена, который получил их ресторан за полгода работы. Это уникальная история. Петр. Доброе утро. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Great to see such a big audience coming for the wine event in uh, Moscow. Uh, my name is Piotr Pietras. I was already introduced. I'm a director of wine and master sommelier based in uh, London in the restaurant Haidt, which, as, you, as many of you know, uh, belongs to uh, Yevgeny Cicvarkin and Tatiana Fokina. Uh, the restaurant is very closely linked to Hedonis Wines, which is a retail shop open uh, six years uh, ago. Today I'm going to talk about the wine pricing, uh, the trends, uh, how the margins look like in my restaurant, how they look like in uh, UK itself. Before we're going to talk about uh, the pricing, let's have a look at the wine consumption uh, in, uh, in Europe. So uh, you can see uh, that the, I'll try to use this uh, green dot, uh, so please observe it, uh, that France, uh, Portugal, Denmark, Italy are responsible for the highest uh, drinking rate when it comes to consumption. By comparison, my country, Poland, my home uh, country, uh, is drinking between three to five liters, which is uh, rather low. Uh, this uh, data comes from Wine Institute of California. It comes from a couple of years ago. This is, however, still relevant, and I brought it to show the contrast. This is a uh, result of many factors. Historical, so the wine production in the country, uh, as well as uh, the wine import, which was developed a couple of hundred years ago, when we refer to England in uh, this case and uh, culture, so uh, the habits of consumers. Uh, for example, in the UK, uh, there's a lot of uh, wine being consumed during the lunchtime. Uh, half bottles thrive, it's a very popular trend, while there are some countries where half bottles, uh, and generally the drinking itself is not as widely accepted socially as, as in there. Economy, so for example, the price of the same wine is the same in, in respective countries, let's say, Chianti Classico, however, the average income differs massively, so it obviously influences the final uh, consumption, final uh, drinking. Talking about the UK itself, it's a very uh, competitive market, it's a saturated market full of restaurants, wine bars, sommeliers, so the wine culture uh, is at the top now, and we're going to see what... Uh, couple of uh, different obstacles, if you know what I mean, will bring, will bring to, to the market. But it's very, very interesting to uh, observe it. I brought this slide basically to show the uh, maturity of, of some markets, why it is important really uh, to price the wines accordingly to also to the demands uh, of, of, of customers. Uh, as you know, many People travel around the world, uh, they, they, there's a big number of restaurants, so uh, I would say the customer is smart, uh, smarter uh, than ever. Now, uh, I would like to talk about the restaurant market in the UK. So uh, the habits and visits uh, to the restaurants are a very important thing here. There's over 150 uh, Michelin star restaurants in England. Uh, itself, um, when we, I mean, plus a couple of more, uh, because we, two days ago, we received one mission star, so obviously the number is, is, is bigger than that now. But uh, by comparison, many, many countries, I mean, including Poland, for example, Hungary, Slovakia, and so on and so on, they have just single uh, mission restaurants. What these high-profile restaurants create is the uh, huge competition on the market, uh, professionalization of the services as well, uh, natural flow in the restaurant. The service is smooth, but it needs to be like that because customers are uh, very demanding. Uh, they drink a lot, so you need to meet, meet their demands. And uh, if you, I encourage you to, to, to visit a couple of restaurants and invite my 
friends from Poland, for example, to do like a two, three day tour and see uh, how confident and how natural at the same time the service in these places uh, is. So basically, uh, customer uh, service, to, to, to finish this slide, is something that will, will make you uh, win. This is as simple as that, but as difficult uh, as, as, as you know. So a few words about my current project, Hyde. I joined the project in January, and the, it was officially launched in April. Uh, this is the restaurant which has got currently the biggest wineries in the UK. We talk about 7,000 uh, references. Uh, I'm responsible for 18 sommeliers, so I can imagine probably it's the, the biggest uh, wine team in the world. Um, because of the current trends and current situation, I needed to source uh, people from around the world. So uh, my team, uh, in my team, I don't have any British sommelier, in fact. What I do have is uh, to have uh, uh, people from Ukraine, Sweden, Japan, Australia, uh, Poland, uh, Canada. So the team is, is very diverse and it brings a lot of uh, open mind to the team. I would say this is a slightly more modern approach to being sommelier. Uh, for me, it's more important to have hunger, energy, enthusiasm for wine. Uh, we can shape such a person that just to come with preconception, be stuffy and pretentious. This is what we really uh, value in uh, my place. Height consists of two uh, different restaurants. So uh, Height Above is the fine dining tasting menu project. Uh, which is uh, doing slightly fewer covers, and we also have Hyde Ground, which is the restaurant, slightly more casual, bistro-like, uh, with more volume, more energy, more, uh, I would say, uh, noise uh, in there. We also have the, the third floor, minus one, where we have our cocktail bar, uh, four private dining rooms, uh, which brings a lot of traffic uh, every day. The restaurant is open from Monday to Sunday. And uh, once again, just to remind you, I can see... Uh, Sorry, on the slide, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so this is uh, very closely linked to Hedonis Wines, uh, so the retail shop uh, that we have uh, 6,000 wines from, and 1,000 wines are based in our uh, own cellar downstairs. So delivery uh, of the wines is to be done within 10 to 15 minutes by van from Hedonis, because this is simply five to seven minutes uh, walking distance. And uh, from the day one, it was very smooth operation. And uh, regarding the chilling, regarding the counting, there was no issues uh, whatsoever. When it comes to challenges and opportunities, uh, this, is, this is a great project uh, for me. Uh, it is all about you know, highest food and uh, wine standards. Now it will be, uh, I would say, probably more pressure than ever when we think about a Michelin star restaurant. We want to go for second star uh, next year. Uh, our owners wanted to have two stars uh, straight away, but let's be, let's be patient because it's been six months um, of uh, running. And uh, another opportunity is just to work with such a, such a great, such a big wine list. But the challenge is we have a lot of demanding customers, knowing their staff, uh, and we just need to meet in the middle and provide the most uh, immaculate uh, service in there. What is also challenging for me, being a director of wine, is to work with as many as 1,500 uh, suppliers. So this is, as you can imagine, a lot of uh, wine uh, orders, a lot of <coughs> coordination, a lot of people sitting in the office and updating the wine list as well. Uh, so we have, you know, our hands plenty uh, of, uh, of work. It's not only uh, operational, it's not only based on the floor, but there's a lot of uh, other duties. Uh, so this is uh, like, a, like a different slightly role of, of sommelier there. We simply, uh, by, by our project, wanna, wanted to make a uh, difference, and I think we already do, by pricing that I'm going to introduce to you right now. So uh, we have uh, a very uh, competitive uh, pricing model in height. So all the prices are done in Hedonese wines. They are done individually, separately, and we do uh, apply the wine searcher uh, price check, for example, just to be sure we are competitive and we are fair to our customers. On the top of that, we put also 30 pound corkage fee, which is flat. And especially when we talk about premium or super premium wines, 
we then uh, have a great uh, advantage uh, of that. Only then you can see the real uh, value on our list. We do have uh, some entry-level wines. Our entry-level wines start at 25 pounds, and we, do, uh, we don't apply the 30 pound corkage fee because we wouldn't be competitive otherwise. So that's what we uh, uh, apply. On the top of the half bottles, we put 15 pounds, and the top of magnum bottles, 60 pounds, and so on and so on. You know? I wish we could sell more double magnums, six liters, etc. But uh, it belongs to bigger groups in uh, our restaurants. Um, as I mentioned before, you can see that on the slide, part of the stock is kept at height. Uh, but majority is kept in our uh, Hedonist Wine uh, retail shop. It is also kept in our two warehouses that we have uh, in London, as well as one warehouse that we have in New York. So there's a lot of shopping that we do. Our head buyer travels to the United States, uh, fill up you know, the, 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 uh, the racks in there, and we bring uh, all, a, lot of, uh, a lot of wine uh, from them. Uh, we have close to 2,000 wines, for example, from America itself, talking about California, uh, Oregon, and Washington State, and New York State, too. There are some interesting wines being produced there. <coughs> right, I hope it's uh, visible to you. Uh, I'm uh, not a perfect IT guy, but I was trying to do my best when and, uh, pasting the, the list here. So this is our, um, uh, our uh, paper wine list, so uh, 1,000 wines. So this is concise version of what you can find uh, on, the, on, the, on the bigger list from uh, Hedonist. So obviously we have the contents. The contents, it's not many for us, it's for customer uh, to have the clear navigation through the list. Uh, they may have some business dinner, they don't have two hours to you know, browse through the list. They want, want to have specific wine from uh, uh, Spain, so they go to uh, page 23. On the separate side, we also have a uh, wine by the glass list. We try to be uh, massively competitive there, and we don't put like higher margins on by the glass wines. Why would we do it? Uh, we do have different measures for uh, whites and reds and rosé. So it's 125, 175 to give customer some choice. Uh, the standard measure of 125 milliliters for champagne. We do provide uh, the champagne trolley. This is one of the first steps when it comes to the uh, customer service. Uh, we do see the difference, so uh, try to experiment yourself. We return, for example, our champagne trolley for two weeks to, the, uh, to exchange the wheels. And during these two weeks, uh, our sales drop massively uh, because uh, simply customer couldn't see physically the champagne, couldn't encourage them. All of the standard kept the same. We were uh, ap uh, approaching customers and speaking about the champagne, but it simply didn't work as, effect uh, as effectively as that. White wines, uh, we try to com uh, combine classic wines and we apply slightly higher margin in there. And we do introduce also some quirky adventurers uh, of the beaten path wines too. Uh, so, for example, not sure how clear you can see, but uh, we've got some white Bordeaux, uh, we have some Grinnell Vertiner, we have some uh, Riesling from Moselle, as well as Albarino. These, these are the wines which are well established, that are fast rotating wines, and customers are at ease uh, when uh, ordering them. By contrast, we do have something which is a bit more adventurous, 100% harsh level, for instance, uh, from, from Tokai, uh, hands of approach from Okota barrels. So when we talk about Gewurztraminer from Australia, it's not something that you would randomly uh, order. Uh, or maybe Sigalus Blanc from Languedoc, so this is biodynamic Chardonnay uh, blend. Uh, so we need to be here careful, uh, obviously you need to have also very uh, effective sommeliers to uh, keep it being sold. Uh, however, the, the, the margin and our approach differs uh, here. Now, <coughs> we have our uh, hidden gems uh, list. This is like uh, on the left-hand side. This is our adventurous discovery uh, uh, selection that we want to promote to our uh, customers. Uh, we Every time we need to have uh, our uh, bin number on the left-hand uh, side. This is for us sommeliers to identify uh, the wines in the cellar. This is also for us to charge by uh, product code. It's much faster and simpler, but this is also for customers. Just imagine 
uh, having a, like a business lunch or business dinner, uh, some uh, host invited his guest, and he needs to order this Königliche uh, Linde Blattige from Umatum in Burgenland in Austria, you know? Pronunciation is something difficult and embarrassing for some guests, so this is like a code f between me and guests uh, also to, you know, convey uh, the message there. Uh, by the way, this is 100% uh, harsh level, but uh, in Austria they call it uh, differently. So here the pricing, the margins, they also uh, are on the lower end. These wines don't uh, rotate as fast as, as uh, they could. Uh, on the other hand, these are small allocations from our suppliers, so we can, uh, in fact, play here with the, uh, with the prices if we uh, uh, want it, because there's not much benchmark on the market when it comes to them. <coughs> on the right-hand side, you will find uh, some double magnum uh, uh, listings too, always, you know, uh, product code, vintages, cuvee, producer, uh, uh, always the size needs to be displayed, well, no matter if it's a, a pairing or this is by the glass or bottle, but it always needs to be, you know, to be, to be clear to, to customers. The margins are uh, very fair. Uh, when I was finalizing the prices, uh, I was comparing things uh, with other uh, leading projects in Mayfair. Uh, Mayfair is very competitive itself, uh, but as you know, you probably do it yourself too. You can see the PDF files on the website of respective restaurants and have a look how the price think. You can visit your competitors. Uh, you can talk with your colleagues openly, the competitors, but we can have an open dialogue. For instance, myself, I'm based close to 67 Palmol, which is uh, one of the most recognized uh, private members club in the world, and I have very open dialogue with them when it comes to pricing, when it comes to uh, service, uh, when there are some questions regarding decanting. Uh, recently, I, I didn't know how uh, 1974 uh, Martha's Vineyard uh, would, 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 uh, would behave uh, uh, in the glass, uh, so uh, I simply checked it, for example, 67 Palmo regarding the service, and although we are maybe 10 minutes apart from each other, we do not uh, comp compete aggressively. We, we, we leave the open uh, dialogue uh, in there. <coughs> what is, <coughs> sorry for that, what is the added uh, value to our uh, customer uh, service and which enhances everything, starting from relationship, uh, from a returning customer uh, to, to simply uh, providing the best possible service is the pre-order uh, uh, service. So every time customers get the confirmation email by, uh, by reservation team, they do have also uh, invitation to have a, uh, have a chat with sommeliers. So what it does from the day one that monthly we have hundreds of uh, emails to answer, hundreds of emails to advise on decanting, on uh, service, maybe no decanting, uh, what would you choose uh, to pair with respective dishes, would you create for me some bottle pairing for our set menu. So there's a lot of chat and by that we can already build fantastic relationship with the guests before even seeing them in the restaurant. So. Uh, Basically, I'm having like a couple of emails exchange, uh, and then already, you know, we are we are in, in a very comfortable, in a very uh, convenient position, uh, uh, seeing these people in the restaurant and be greeted uh, by them uh, by name, by surname. So this is a very uh, very comfortable system that we are part of, and I I need to admit, uh, this is successful uh, indeed. Now, pricing in other restaurants in London. I used to work for a couple of other projects for small fine dining Michelin star restaurant called Lawson Place. I did work as well for big, high volume Michelin star restaurant called Maze by Gordon uh, Ramsay. So the pricing there, uh, we need to uh, basically remind that there's no universal formula for, uh, for pricing itself. There's a lot of diversity. Think about five stars hotels. There's very often the flat margins, which I'm big opponent of, basically. Uh, I'm gonna show you one example why it doesn't simply work. Uh, but I do prefer to have cash margin on some premium, ma premium wines. I prefer margin flexibility, which you need to, uh, as a sommelier, have this business acumen, uh, business awareness, uh, you need to travel a lot and know how to uh, price your wines uh, individually. Usually, uh, when you have a look at the slide, wines by the glass 
and wine pairings for your tasting menu, they have separate uh, margin. They are slightly higher, especially when it comes to uh, highly um, popular uh, wines on the list. On the other hand, these niche, uh, exotic wines, uh, some of the, pit, uh, of the uh, beaten path wines, they have slightly lower margin just to encourage uh, the selling. Here what I mean is maybe to have some uh, Azertico from Santorini, have some wine from Tenerife, uh, some have some wine from New York State. You're not going to uh, uh, price them, let's say, at your regular 70-75% GP, in my opinion but you can, uh, by contrast, uh, apply slightly lower uh, to encourage the selling, to promote the wines, and uh, uh, by, by, by flexibility you will still be able to uh, achieve your final uh, margin that you want to have. Now, talking about uh, the premium wines, uh, shall we apply cash margin or shall we approach uh, the, the, some, something which is fixed, something that our bosses want us want us to do. Uh, because of a couple of different um, application programs, because of the access to the internet, we now know uh, Vivino, uh, Wine Searcher, Seller Tracker, they're all uh, about uh, feedbacks, about the prices, about sharing your common view, what this wine tasted like. And it is important to know that uh, our guest is smarter than ever. And even if we put uh, some great premium wine uh, some people, yes, they might buy it, but some people uh, are driven by the prices. They travel a lot, they visit restaurants, and their awareness is, uh, because of these things that I mentioned, is greater than ever. So I think it's our uh, own, our like, common responsibility to be fair, customer-friendly, uh, and we will still be able to make money uh, out of wine and keep our businesses uh, sustainable. Now, uh, I've got here uh, the example about the cash margin uh, on premium wines. Uh, this is, let's say, 1982 uh, first growth. It can be, uh, let's say, your Latour. Uh, a market value would be around uh, 1,600 uh, uh, pounds. Uh, when we apply the regular 70% GP margin, what it does, just have a look at the slide. Uh, so you have your 1,000 pounds net cost price times your 70% uh, uh, GP. So the reversal will be 30% uh, beverage cost. Uh, and you have your uh, price times 20% uh, VAT, which is uh, referring to UK market. And we end up with ridiculous 4,000 uh, pound uh, uh, wine on your list. I mean, as I said, you're going to find some person who's going to buy it, maybe two, maybe three. But in general, if somebody wants to spend money uh, on wine, they drink a lot. It's, it's, it's their habit to eat out and spend money on fine wine. It's not going to work in the, in the long run. Uh, and uh, the suggestion would be basically uh, to put the cash margin. I mean, here, uh, let's have a look. You know, it's uh, 800. Oh, once again, sorry. Uh, so we put our 800 uh, pound cash on the top of the uh, buying price. Uh, and we end up with 2,160 pounds versus uh, the market value. We still make a lot of money here, right? But comparing that with, uh, I don't know, Malbec or Shiraz, how many Malbecs would you need to sell to achieve this 800 uh, uh, pounds, let's say? So this is important to know that cash margin uh, is something we uh, apply when, when, when pricing our uh, premium wines. And uh, once again, uh, customer service is here a very uh, crucial uh, thing. So shall we... Uh, a few words about um, uh, margin, margin uh, flexibility. Uh, shall we uh, price it according to the same formula? We need to consider a couple of things. Location of the, of the venue, the size of the venue, uh, prestige of the, of the place too. Uh, we need to think about customers, the preferences, if there is potential to sell uh, fine wine in our places, if there is potential to do the volume uh, in our place. Also the wine list size. Do we need to consider some people that will be based in the office and will be responsible for our orders, for our uh, pricing? Because if you have the wine is of my size, I've got two guys just working on coordination and they never touch the floor, they never do anything than you know, helping us making the things happen. So uh, this is the thing uh, worth uh, considering. And once again, uh, what I mentioned on this slide uh, is 
would you uh, would you speak with your uh, with, with your competition? What do leaders do on your local market? How do they uh, uh, behave? Uh, what are their customers? And so on and so on. So there are a lot of things. Uh, worth considering when it comes to opening restaurant, when it comes to developing the wine list, and the small nuances, the small differences, uh, they make the huge difference at the end of uh, the day. Um, I will ask for my uh, tabliczka, my, my table. Uh, I know some words in uh, Russian is much uh, more comfortable to listen for me, but uh, to communicate it will be probably uh, a big challenge, but I, I listen to my bosses and I do understand 70% of that, they are not aware of that. Uh, margin flexibility, uh, right, so here we have the example. What we do, uh, let's, we, it's not going to work, but you can uh, see I'm going to talk in detail here. So we have, we have our uh, uh, GP uh, on the 70 uh, percent. Let's say we are in five-star hotel. Uh, we, uh, uh, our general manager, manager told us to keep the same uh, formula for each single wine. Wine number one, it will be maybe your, uh, I don't know, some uh, basic uh, Gran Reserva uh, Rioja. Wine number two, it can be some uh, aged Brunello di Montalcino, so 200 pounds. Wine number three, Saint Million uh, Premier Grand Cru Classe, let's say, uh, from very good vintage. So we have uh, here 80 pounds, 200 pounds, and 320 pounds. But we, uh, and to have a look at the, at the other uh, part of the slide, uh, this is respectively 70% of the, of the sales share, 25% and 5%. We sell 20 wines uh, in total. And what we do when we apply uh, slightly different margins, right? This is a very psychological approach here in wine number two. We did a small change by changing the wine number two from 200 to 181 pounds, bringing your GP to 67%. Slightly lower, but more encouraging, and this is breaking this uh, barrier already. What we do with wine number three, we bring it even lower than that. So from 70%, we bring it to 61%, and your uh, Premier Grand Cru Classe for Saint Million costs now not 320, but 200. 46 uh, pounds. Sales share may, as a result, change slightly. Uh, you may sell maybe uh, fewer bottles of your Grand Reserva, but if you have a bit more efficient sommeliers and if you have these prices listed uh, there, you may sell maybe, let's say, just as simple as that, two bottles more uh, of your uh, aged Brunello and just only one uh, more bottle of your uh, Bordeaux wine. Uh, what it will change, the sales share uh, will slightly uh, change. As a result, daily, uh, you're going to have 60, 62 pounds, 65 pounds, 70 pounds, depending on your, on, your, on your margin. It seems it's not a lot. But when you take it in you, into your uh, monthly uh, perspective, you're going to end up with as much as 2,000 pounds uh, difference. I mean, it's all right. Uh, you can spend it on your, on your sommeliers, you can, send it, you can send him for some uh, wine courses, wine exam, you can buy your glassware, you can buy your wine equipment, uh, 2,000 pounds just on this simple uh, calculation. And it doesn't, it's not a, like a brainer, right? Uh, it is uh, just a, a small difference, small shift, uh, but uh, I think worth uh, trying and keeping your, your margin uh, rather flexible. Um, yeah, well, are we on a good slide? Yes, we are. So now a small task for you. Uh, if you, if you want to uh, calculate for me, uh, the cost price of the wine is 30 pounds. Beverage cost in uh, task number one is 35 pounds, uh, sorry, 35%, and uh, there's a GP of 65% in task, one, uh, task two. Uh, let's imagine we have uh, my uh, British VAT of 20%, and uh, if you could, in 30 seconds or in one minute, let me know what the final uh, selling price in both cases would be, if you don't mind. It all obviously uh, seems simple. We all know it. Uh, it's all straightforward. But uh, just, just uh, to have an idea, 
if we are going uh, into the right direction. So that's pretty simple, hopefully. Any ideas what, uh, in both cases, the selling price could be? Sorry? 85, okay. Any other bets? Any other consideration? 20% uh, VATI, I would like to remind. Yeah, so this is uh, 103 uh, pounds in both cases, as uh, beverage cost is the opposite, is the reversal of your... Uh, of your gross profit, of your GP, uh, express in, in percentage. So uh, essentially we talk uh, about 103 pounds, obviously in your wine is you can round it up to 105, 110, whatever. Uh, but here is the calculation for uh, your beverage cost. You basically, you have your buying price, you divide it by uh, 0.35, you've got your price, but you need to add the VAT on the top of that. And for GP, uh, it's, it's quite similar. You simply need to have your buying price divided. Uh, uh, it's times 100 and divided by 35. Then uh, you need to add your VAT, and it's exactly the same. So it's good to have the awareness what each marker indicate for you, uh, for your boss. Uh, restaurants in London are very much uh, driven by uh, GP. Uh, hotel, uh, hotels, they operate with uh, beverage cost, food cost uh, uh, figures and percentages. Now, uh, a few words about the restaurant uh, trends uh, themselves. So the service <coughs> in, uh, in restaurants now is slightly more uh, approachable, less formal. The communication is more open. Your rapport with the guests is, is closer. Uh, it's less stuffy, less pretentious. Uh, there's a lot of simplicity when it comes also to your plating, your interior, your uniform, the message you want to convey to the table. Uh, in Hyde, for example, we don't create poems in front of, uh, in front of the guest. Uh, Oli Dabuso, executive chef, he doesn't want to focus on ourselves, uh, on the product. The product will speak for itself. Uh, we simply uh, uh, have a few words to talk about the, the wine or food and uh, we, 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 we leave the, the scene, uh, I would say. Uh, I don't see anything uh, wrong with that, but this is just another trend, another uh, direction. Uh, you can see there is uh, uh, less and less uh, tablecloth uh, uh, in the restaurants. Uh, white gloves are thrown away, but uh, I don't disrespect these places. There are the places which I like to visit. These fine dining projects are Fantastic, but there is simultaneous, there is separate trend uh, happening these days uh, around the world. Uh, especially the trends are uh, to be found I don't know, in Scandinavia. There's a lot of beautiful uh, wooden filled uh, places uh, and a lot of people follow, uh, follow uh, that. Uh, also what happens uh, around the world in, uh, in uh, leading markets of uh, uh, Melbourne, New York, Berlin, uh, this is the, uh, there's a prices normalization and it needs to happen because once again uh, our guest in the center of attention is, is uh, more aware, is more conscious of uh, pricing so restaurants respond uh, very quickly to keep them, uh, to keep them uh, competitive, to keep them attracting uh, People, uh, this is a very important thing uh, to remember here. And uh, if you obviously have any questions, uh, I, can, I can cover a couple of uh, more uh, elements of the, uh, of the pricing world. I uh, can, can briefly talk you through a high project when it comes to uh, a service or our pricing policy. Uh, we basically, as a, as a restaurant, are... Uh, on between 55 to 60 percent total uh, uh, margin. If you're going to ask me that, I already answered that. Versus classic 75 percent, 72 percent in Mayfair, uh, which is happening there. So it keeps us uh, very uh, customer friendly. We attract a lot of wine lovers, and to keep ourselves very sustainable, we do in fact do a lot of uh, volume traffic in the restaurant. We have 
slower uh, movement, fine dining restaurant, but we also have the restaurant with higher pace. We have uh, a lot of space in our bar downstairs. We have our private dining rooms uh, too. So there's a lot of room for selling. And uh, I, 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 was, I, I wouldn't say I was skeptical, but it exceeded my expectations what you can sell and in which quantity uh, when I joined Hyde, uh, in this case. And I would like to share also small anecdotes uh, with, uh, with you. When I had, uh, I was approached with, with uh, uh, quite a few customers that we are very expensive. Our wine is uh, super expensive. It's too expensive. I had a couple of feedbacks like that. But in fact, uh, what happens is we have a lot of fine wine uh, on the list. And this fine wine by nature is expensive, but in our project, it is priced at the lower margin. And because we have 7,000 wines, a huge percentage of that is the fine wine. So uh, we obviously have the entry-level wines, but the big part of that are these uh, top wines from Bordeaux, Burgundy, Champagne region, California, and so on and so on. So we are not exp uh, expensive. We are, in fact, cheap, but sell expensive wine there. So thank you very much. Spasiba. Uh, dziękuję. Is, isn't he brilliant? I don't know, you tell me. I wish I could have the British visa tomorrow just to go to the Hyde. You are warmly invited, you know it, right? Okay, thanks. Um, we are open to the questions. Друзья, ну что, у нас с вами uh, есть некоторое время, буквально минут 10 uh, максимум на вопросы. И, в общем-то, ребята помогут, поэтому тяните руки. Так, вот сюда. Нет, нет, сейчас э, микрофон. А, было очень интересно. Спасибо, меня зовут Влад, компания Simple. Я бы хотел спросить, там в разделе винные карта был один из разделов Decanters. Что имеется в виду? Вина, которые рекомендуют декантировать, какая-то форма подачи или что? Раздел Decanters. Okay, uh, so for English, uh, I'm going to answer in English, obviously. <laughs> uh, the question uh, was why we have decanters uh, on our uh, page, on one of the wines. So this is added value to our customer service. What we do have there is nine different decanters of different shape and different use for uh, our customers. This is for red wine, this is for sparkling wine, this is for white wine. And they do have possibility to choose these wines uh, before the service, before we even uh, uh, start serving their wine. Uh, so they can simply point at the specific decanter. Uh, we have quite a few of them, uh, so they, are, they can feel free to, to choose any of them. And uh, we do table side service, basically. Uh, it is also a great selling technique, by the way. If you have this, you know, uh, swans or the snails, you decant at the table, your neighboring tables notice that, hey, Katie, look what, what they're doing in there. And the, you, can, you can upsell some wine. We want this decanter, too. So what happens, you know, very often, uh, Evgeny, our uh, boss, is coming, drinking a lot of uh, wine in this uh, uh, fancy decanters, uh, in this uh, sommelier grand cru riddle glasses as well, and all the neighboring tables, they want to copy that, and they drink it, they order fine wine, so it's funny to observe, you know, this kind of things happening there. Thank you. So the next question, следующий вопрос. Вот, пожалуйста. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Егор, я сомелье из Вайн Релижен. У меня очень простой вопрос. Если после вычисления вы получаете цену, к примеру, там 112 фунтов, вы ее и оставляете в таком же виде или вы как-то округляете ну, до более, скажем так, приятных цен, там 110 ставите? И вторая часть вопроса, используете ли вы такой простой трюк, как указание вместо 100 фунтов 99, вместо 50 49? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first question, thank you very much for asking, uh, was about rounding up the prices. Uh, we do round them up to 100, for example, if you have uh, 107, like the calculation show 103, I would round it up to 100, to 110, uh, to, make a, to make a difference. The second part of the, uh, of the question was, if you want to break this barrier, uh, for example, the wine is sold at 100 pounds, 
uh, than if I would do uh, 96, 97, 95, uh, whatever it would be. Yes, in height I was doing that. Uh, actually, I still remember a couple of examples, like uh, some beautiful red Priorat that uh, in many places uh, uh, costed like 120 pounds, 110 pounds. Uh, when I was doing my calculation, it was 100 pounds. I was thinking, okay, let's make it 95 pounds. And it already it's different uh, view. It's uh, differently uh, perceived by, by, by customers because they have benchmark, they have comparison uh, in other uh, places uh, in, in London too. Yeah. Так, uh, давайте сначала девушке передаем микрофон в качестве как, uh, как, как джентльмены. Uh, всем здравствуйте, меня зовут Анастасия, я являюсь трейд-маркетологом, поэтому у меня профессиональный вопрос. Вы все-таки uh, своего покупателя да, привлекаете обширным, обширной винной картой и хорошим ценообразованием, либо вы все-таки тоже проводите разные маркетинговые активности для своих гостей ресторана? Yes, great, great question. In terms of uh, the question for English speaker was about, probably they have the translation, so it's fine. Uh, it's about uh, marketing at activities. Uh, great tool for us is using, you know, uh, social media as well. So we are using uh, Instagram. Uh, you can follow that, the place for me to hide. Uh, this is our journey through wine. Since the day one, we launched this uh, uh, this kind of story. Uh, it is co-run by myself, uh, Yevgeny Chichvarkin, uh, and his personal assistant. So we do uh, highlight uh, our wine moments in the restaurants. Uh, they respond to us uh, as well there. Uh, they can see uh, what what we do on the on the daily basis. Uh, by marketing activities, we also organize wine dinners, for example, focusing on some particular wine regions, wine producers, uh, suppliers are very helpful. Obviously, they want to be part of, 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 of that connection between us and, and customers. Uh, there is some tastings, commercial tastings uh, happening as well. We have the private dining rooms that can host uh, 20, 30, 40 people uh, when, they, when they stand. So, for example, we did organize a couple of events to attract customers. But what is great about this project is to also have Hedonism Wines uh, supporting us. This is a great backup from the day one. Uh, they send us a lot of customers. Obviously, they were de developing their customer base for the last six years. Uh, they opened officially in 2012. So it was like a very smooth uh, transition, uh, and they brought quite a few uh, wine lovers, fine wine lovers there. So uh, there, are, there, are, there are some other ways. We do run, uh, we have our marketing agency and they do some uh, separate things, but when it's, uh, as far as the wine theme is concerned, we do these things that I mentioned to you. Thank you. Вот, пожалуйста, малым человеку, а потом вопрос задаст Анатолий Корнеев, он уже забронировал себя. Здравствуйте, Роман Вячеслав. Simple Wine. Какие дисконтные программы используете в бутиках, ресторанах? Какие скидки максимальные можно получить? Потому что 100 фунтов – это круто. Что используется? Максимальная скидка в ваших ресторанах, бутиках? Mm -hmm. We don't offer discounts, first of all, uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to our uh, policy. Uh, what we encourage people to do as well, to build our premium wine customer base, we invite people uh, to have any time of the week to have the, their own wine. Yeah, so what? this is uh, as simple as 30 pound corkage fee, uh, any wine you can bring, and uh, it's obviously a very popular trend there. A lot of restaurants, they don't allow, first of all, to bring their own wine. Second of all, they price 50, 60 pounds, uh, so we Stay, stay competitive. Uh, we don't say, oh, we don't earn money on, on the top of that. But we have the customer who very often will bring six top wine for the big table, and they're going to order three more wines from our list. So at the end of the day, it works better. I mean, uh, once again, how many um, Albarino, how many Rieslings from Mosel you need to sell? I mean, basic Riesling from Mosel. Uh, to achieve uh, this, this kind of turnover. So this is um, uh, just to 
answer your question. We don't offer discounts for our regular customers. We can uh, get some uh, cocktails on arrival, some champagne. Uh, Hedonese Wines, on the other hand, as a retail project, they have their own um, discount policy. But I'm not fully aware of that, uh, I'm afraid. No, I think that... Okay, we have one more question. Anatoly, давайте вы и еще один вопрос и уже время нас к следующему спикеру я приблизительно представляю как устроен английский рынок но у меня вопрос все-таки прозвучит конкретный как вы осуществляете закупки через гедонизм wines или у вас есть своя служба вы имеете доступ к поставщикам So our only supplier is hedonis wines so the retail shop is the only suppliers. Every single wine that we sell in the restaurant, we are being invoiced by our uh, mother company. But um, me, as a, as a director of wine, I'm liaising with a head buyer from Hedonism, and we do work with this respective 1,500 supplier plus. Sometimes it can be one simple bottle of wine, and we're not going to approach the supplier again. Sometimes this is 30, 41 wines at once, and we just reorder this, this wine. So this is mainly... Hedonese Wines responsibility to order uh, 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 these wines for us, so we need to liaise with them. As I told you, we have two people that are responsible for our account. I, they work as mediators be between us and Hedonese Wines. So uh, on our behalf, they order some things, they request samples. Uh, I mean, but the opportunities are limitless. We are a bit more privileged, I would say, because Hedonese Wines is being offered fantastic prices and the retail shop, you must not forget. So the prices also differ. И тогда у меня вытекающий вопрос. А вы знаете, как, устроено, как устроены закупки у гедонизма? Мне просто интересно, в российской реалии мы имеем иногда ситуацию, когда ресторатор может получить 60% скидки. Максимальная глубина скидки в Лондоне какая при закупке продукта? So what is the discount we can be offered by supplier, right? Or because I don't understand. But the head on uh -huh. wines, they can have. Uh -huh. I mean, the very often they are, mm -hmm, very often they are below, uh, like 20% below the price uh, competitors may be offered, for instance, because of our buying powers, because of the wines we have, because quite frankly, um, many suppliers want to be visible in head on his wines and they want to be visible at height. So, uh, but in the long run, this is a win-win situation, both for suppliers and for us, because we make volume and we're going to reorder a palette of, I don't know, your Bruno Payard or whatever it could be. Yeah. Спасибо. Ну, чтобы придерживаться тайминга, я попрошу все-таки, у нас есть возможность, такая уникальная, в общем-то, возможность в рамках нашего мероприятия в течение дня еще пообщаться с Петром лично. И просто сейчас уже мы должны придерживаться тайминга, так как у нас следующий спикер. Но я уверен, что Петр с радостью ответит на вопрос. А если будут трудности с переводом, девочки нам помогут. Thank you very much, Петр. It was great. Спасибо. Thank you. Спасибо.